really lovely to hear the uh, hubbub of conversation as we arrive and uh, greet one another. It's lovely to enjoy one another's company and catch up on our week, hear how we've all been doing. Welcome, welcome to our service of Holy Communion here today uh, at St Mark's Church and today we are we're still in our, um, in our uh, sermon series in 1 Peter, but we're also celebrating our harvest festival today. So we're, um, we're thinking with thankfulness for all of God's good gifts of provision for us. I'm sure too as we come to our service today that uh, I events in the Middle East, in Israel and, and uh uh, Gaza and the West Bank are very much in our thoughts and prayers um, as we come to our service today. So we hold that situation in prayer before the Prince of Peace today as we come to him in worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well done, everybody. <laughs> Creator, from whom come all good things, we welcome your presence and give thanks for your generosity toward us. Our hearts are grateful for the life you have given us and the world in which we live. For the beauty and bounty of the world, its seasons and its gifts. For all the good gifts of the harvest and earth's fruits which sustain and gladden us. For those who work the land and the food chain which reaches our door. For comforts, homes and friends and the power of compassion for this earth and the one you sent to restore us when we fell away from your plan. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Now we're going to have, uh, we're going to have two songs um, now and during the first one um, we will bring up to the front the, uh, the amazing generous gifts that you've all given um, for harvest today which will go to the food bank in Southampton which we'll hear a little bit more about uh, later on so um, the first one is Harvest Samba Yay! and uh, you'll be pleased to know that you'll be singing this song for at least the rest of the day and it gets into your ears so I invite you to stand if we're able to and sing and we'll bring up the harvest
display of all our harvest offerings. Thank you so much for all of your generosity. We're going to continue in our worship by singing our next song, which celebrates the God of all creation. you are a God of all wonders beyond anything we can imagine and I thank you Lord for this offering um, of these things that people have bought to serve others in our community. I do pray that you would bless them and that each person that receives any part of what has been given this morning would know so much of your wonderful grace and love. Amen. Please do be seated. And uh, many, many thanks again for your generosity. Um, I think that's uh, among the, the most items that we've, ever, that we've ever seen for our harvest offering. So thank you so much. And you'll hear a little bit more a bit later on about where that money, um, not the money, but the, the gifts are going to be uh, going to, to help people. So our children's groups are going to go out now. And Leah um, is leading us, or leading our children today. Um, so let's pray for them. I think they're going to be thinking about harvest as well. So let's pray for them as they go. Father, we thank you for our precious children and young people. And we ask for your blessing on this time. 
as they learn together more about your gifts in creation and your provision for us and the, your call upon us to be generous. So bless them and be with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're going to continue in our service with confession. Today our confession is focused around our use of creation and the gifts that God has given us. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer, and in your mercy, forgive yes. us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, Forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world that you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through our collect today, our special prayer of the day, we will give thanks for the offerings that have been given and um, pray for God's blessing on them. So we say together, Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, um, our first Bible reading is going to be brought to us by Christine and our second by Bev. Thank you. Our first Bible reading is taken from uh, 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Living for God. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human de desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation and they heap abuse on you but they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled, so that you can pray above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins 
offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second Bible reading is Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11. If you have an encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who I haven't met before, I'm Sophie and I'm a member of the worship team here at St. Mark's. Um, I'm just going to pray before I get started. Lord, I pray that you will bless the words of my lips and use them to speak to all our hearts with your message this morning. Amen. Amen. So, the theme this week is building community. We're looking at that chapter from Peter. Uh, and you might have noticed that it's also Harvest Festival. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, don't worry, said Cathy. I'm sure you'll find a way to tie the two themes together. It'll be fine. Um, and I thought, well, do you know what? The answer's kind of obvious, isn't it? Food. I mean, food is the link, isn't it, between Harvest Festival. It's all about food. And one great way to build community is to share food. Yeah? Um, to eat together. After a harvest, um, traditionally, the workers would all sit in this big barn and they'd all share food and cider or whatever they preferred to drink, um, and they would celebrate finishing that harvest. That sort of sense of community is built into a harvest festival. And at work, actually, we still eat out to celebrate a job well done and um, people leaving or joining. And as a family, and probably you guys as families, when you get together, you eat together for birthdays, for weddings, funerals. You know, food is part of community, isn't it? But after thinking about this for a while, I became convinced of two things. One, Jesus used to eat with his disciples a lot. Um, so he's clearly in agreement about it being a good way to build a community. After all, his first miracle was at a wedding feast. And his last act before he died with his disciples was to eat the Last Supper. And even after he'd been resurrected, he still found time to break bread with them and to eat broiled fish. Food was really important to him. 
But secondly, everyone eats to build community. From atheists to Hindus to everyone in between, we all eat as a way of bonding with our neighbour. So it's hardly an exclusively Christian pastime or idea. So I was thinking, okay, how can we build a community differently from other people? And Cathy was talking about how the harvest samba is a bit of an earworm. And the earworm that I've had over the last couple of weeks is that, um, it's all about you, it's all about you. And, 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 not, and, and instead of singing baby, I sing Jesus. It's all about you. Um, and we're going to sing a song afterwards, which is similar words, but better tune, actually, to be honest. Um, but, okay, so that's the difference, isn't it? It's all about Jesus. Jesus built a community that was radical, that was inclusive, and it was attractive. How can we follow suit? I mean, that's, to me, that is like a huge challenge, yeah? It's easy to build a community with our friends, but to build something that is seen as being radical, inclusive, and attractive is really hard. So let's get back to basics. Jesus tells us that the two most important commandments are to love God and to love our neighbour. And these are pretty radical statements in today's society. Love God? No thanks, say the atheist. And love my neighbour? Well, only as long as they aren't too different from me and they don't annoy me. <laughs> you know, that seems to be what I see most of the time on social media anyway. And yet this passage calls us to do just that. Love God, love our neighbour. And in case anybody out here is still wondering who your neighbour is, then Jesus did clear up that matter with the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan talks about neighbours and the Samaritans and the Jews were really hated each other. And the Jews wouldn't touch Samaritans, um, much less speak to each other. So your neighbour could be a stranger from a foreign country that you are at odds with. We are not just talking about Jim and Janet from next door. Anyway, I'm going to dive right in at the middle of this passage, verse 7, and we'll come back to the first few verses in a minute. Peter writes with a sense of urgency. The end of all things is near, he says. And that's as true today as it was back then. Because we don't know how many years, months, weeks, days or even hours we have left. We might die tomorrow, and so we should live our best lives, by which I mean not the debauched lifestyles referred to at the start of the passage, but the ones which are pleasing to God. We should be calm, self-controlled people of peace, as one translation puts it. Above all, says Peter, love one another deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. The word he uses for deeply here denotes a supreme effort, literally, with every muscle strained. Loving one another is not an easy choice, and it is a choice. It needs to be um, something that the Holy Spirit helps us to come through with. But once we do love someone, we can overlook a multitude of sins. Again, we are not expected to tolerate abuse, as Lizzie made so clear the other week. But we can probably put up with, indeed, even forgive behaviours that would turn others away. I've heard of families that have been torn apart because one person owed another money. Or because someone spoke to someone else who was a persona non grata and, you know, well. None of these are the kind of communities Jesus wants us to build. The conditional kind, where people are expected to please you or leave. No. We are called to offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Without grumbling? <laughs> and now Peter's gone too far. <laughs> I mean, I love grumbling, so this is a really hard verse for me. But actually, if you dig into it, hospitality is a hard gift to practice. Hospitality doesn't just mean inviting your friends round for a fancy meal. The Greek word that Peter used for hospitality is and don't, please don't, don't, my pronunciation is not good, okay, but it's basically philo xenoi, which translate as the love of strangers. Philo, from to love, not philo pastry. <laughs> and um, 
xeno, meaning strangers, which is the root of the word xenophobic. In fact, philo-xenoi is pretty much the opposite of xenophobia. At the very least, Peter was thinking here of practising the offering of accommodation to the visiting preachers and other Christians who would come to a town bearing a letter of recommendation, but often no money, and then they would rely on the generosity of folk to give them a space to sleep and some food. But the implication is something much deeper. Now, I'm going to quote at length um, something which Pete Gregg said in his blog this week, so you might have read it already if you're down with your Pete Gregg blogs, I don't know. But I think it really bears sharing. He says, Philozenoi means friendship to strangers. It's about kindness to people who are strange, to those we don't know, not to friends. This is where we get words like hospital and hostile from. It's about caring for those who are hurting and welcoming those who are unwelcome elsewhere. He says, I think this is what Jesus is getting at in Luke 14. When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may invite you back. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Henry Nguyen, the great Dutch priest who lived the last 10 years of his life in community with people with profound learning disabilities, said that the highest form of hospitality is a particular kind of listening. Listening not to change people, but offering them space where the change can take place. I'm going to read that again. Henry Nguyen said, listening not to change people, but offering them space where change can take place. And so Pete Gregg concludes, above all, therefore, hospita hospitality is outworked in a posture of radical presence, an attitude of attentiveness and availability. Just wow, yeah? A posture of radical presence, an attitude of attentiveness and availability. <coughs> That's a lot more difficult than cooking a fancy meal. Okay, so it's not a coincidence that this, this command from Peter comes after the first bit about turning away from debauchery and sinful living. We can only achieve that kind of philozenoi philo love for strangers if we learn to live like Christ did. At the end of last week's reading, we heard about baptism saving us by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, says Peter, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves with the same attitude because he who suffered in his body is done with sin. When we are baptised, we are in union with Christ's death and resurrection and in some way share the sufferings of Christ and claim through his sufferings deliverance from sin. I wish it was as easy as being done with sin in the same way that we can be done with the Redbridge roadworks. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with them. Yeah. But still, Peter urges us not to live such wild, reckless lives as the pagans, i.e. the non-Christians, live, even though our old friends might heap abuse on us for being boring squares. Essentially, Peter is calling us to repent of our sins before we eat together. Remind you of anything? Oh, yes. Communion. Yeah? We sit together and we confess our sins before God. We've already done that this morning. And we make peace with our neighbours before we share in that most holy of meals. And it's just the same pattern we see in Peter's letter. We are urged to turn away from our, own li our old lives and make efforts to love one another deeply before we offer hospitality to one another. And this has echoes of the ancient Jewish festivals of Yom Kippur and Sukkot. And Sukkot is known as the Harvest Festival and it was just celebrated last week. It finished on the 6th, so two days ago. The two festivals are linked together. Yom Kippur is described as that most solemn of Jewish festivals when Jews seek to 
um, expiate their sins, to get rid of their sins and achieve reconciliation with God. The purpose of Yom Kippur is to be purified by the practice of forgiving one another's sins and by sincerely repenting of one's own sins against God. The day before, friends, ask forgiveness of one another and then the entire next day is spent fasting and praying. In the ancient times when the temple was in Jerusalem, that's the day when the high priest would make many sacrifices and then eventually be allowed into the Holy of Holies that one day a year and then once this festival is over even on the evening of Yom Kippur people start to prepare for Sukkot which is known as the harvest festival this is also known as the feast of the booths because I guess historically the harvest festival had remembered how at the end of harvest the harvest workers would build these booths as they struggled to get all the harvest in before the rains came and these booths are just um little shacks with um, branches across the top, just little makeshift shelters. But now the Jews build the shelters in memory, sort of of that, but also in memory of when their ancestors were in the desert for 40 years after escaping from Egypt. Five days after Yom Kippur, the festival of Sukkot starts in earnest, and for a week meals are eaten in the sukkah, the, the shelter weather permitting and people may even sleep outside in them. It's this really joyful festival with lots of singing and dancing and thanking God for the harvest. And so we see this pattern. Repentance followed by a communal meal, whether in Peter's letter, in the service of Holy Communion, or the twin festivals of Yom Kippur and Sukkot. To build a community that's something special, something close to God, a thin place. That takes something more than good food. It requires a closeness to God on our part. And we can only achieve that through repentance. By turning away from our old habits and turning to new ones. And the other good thing I think about repentance is that as well as bringing us closer to God, it's a great leveller. Because as we repent we realise that we are just as far away from God as anyone else. And when we understand that, we can start to welcome everyone as our equals. And maybe then we can start to work on our listening skills so that one day we may indeed be able to listen, as Henry Nguyen describes it, not to change people, but offering them space where change can take place. All of which can only be achieved by serving others with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. By looking to Jesus, we can find a way to build a community that is about more than sharing food. It's about sharing our love of him. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Sophie. Just want to give us a moment to just to quietly reflect on what Sophie's been saying, just to think about how that speaks to you. And also just to reflect on the incredible gift of Jesus to him of himself to us that we no longer can only have forgiveness once a year. No longer are sacrifices needed to be made before we can come into that holy place, into the presence of God. But Jesus, by his sacrifice of himself, opened the way for us to come into the presence of the Holy One at any time. So just give us a moment to reflect. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time of year when we, um, when we, when we bring in the harvest, when as we look around us we see um, we see the harvest being brought in by those that work in that, uh, in, that, uh, in that field. 
And Lord, we give you thanks for the blessing of the harvest and all that that means. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you call us to be a unique community based around you and all that you are and all that you have done for us. A community of sacrifice, of forgiveness, of radical hospitality and inclusion. Help us to reflect today on how you call us to turn away perhaps from some habits that we have to turn back to you and receive your forgiveness and cleansing so that we can more fully be that community to one another, truly love one another deeply and embrace both one another and also those who might be considered strangers. Thank you that everyone is welcome at your table. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're comfortable to do so as we affirm our faith together. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do take your seats as Lizzie comes to lead us in our prayers. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, what a privilege, what a joy to be in your presence. We praise you for your overwhelming, welcoming love. Thank you that you care for each one of us, that you understand our fears and our joys, and that you just love it when we share our whole lives with you. So Father, we bring you our prayers for the world, the world you created and designed for peace and abundance. We marvel at its splendor and beauty. We wonder at its resources and riches. You created this world and it was good, yet we have caused so much harm and damage. We lift up countries in conflict and pray especially, Lord, for Israel and Gaza, for the bereaved, the injured, those taken prisoner, and all those from both sides that are having to leave their homes. Oh, Father, we know this is a volatile and complicated situation. We ask for an end to the many years of violence and hatred and pray for those who have grown weary of searching for peaceful solutions. We ask you to raise up leaders who will listen to your call for peace and justice and who will work to bring reconciliation. We pray too for Ukraine and Yemen and Sudan and all those countries that are living through war. Father, we cry out to you for the time when all people can live in, in peace and with dignity. May seeds of your love, peace and justice be planted in every land. We 
we lift up those countries where there is not enough food through natural disaster and failed harvests. We ask you to open the ears of those in power to hear the cries of the hungry and open their hearts to share from the abundance and wealth of their nations, including our own. Father, please show us better ways of organising the world's resources so that there is enough for all. And Lord, there seem to have been so many natural disasters across the world, flooding in India, another earthquake in Afghanistan. And we pray that aid and rescue will come quickly. We thank you for the work of charities and agencies who work across the world, taking supplies, providing health care and education. Father, bless their work and inspire generosity so that they have the resources they need. And closer to home, Lord, we thank you for Southampton City Mission and the Basics Bank for its volunteers. And we ask that our harvest gifts will be a symbol of how much their work is valued and a blessing to those in need. Father, may those who receive these gifts know that they are an expression of your love. We pray for anyone we know who is ill, anyone who is struggling. We ask that they will know you close to them. Be everything they need and give them a harvest of healing and peace. We pray for St Mark's School, its pupils and teachers. May it be a place of safety and joy. And we pray for a harvest of opportunity for all those there. We pray for the care homes in our parish, for residents and staff. Lord, may they be places of care for body, mind and spirit with a harvest of friendship and community. And we pray for our church, your church, Lord. Inspire and encourage us to work for justice and peace, sharing your love with the people we meet. Give us a harvest of love and relationship as people come to know you. We offer you these prayers, Lord, and the unspoken prayers of our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I invite you to stand if you're comfortable to do so, um, as we share the peace of Christ with one another. As Sophie said before, uh, we come to share from the Lord's table, we, we, uh, we share the peace of Christ with one another. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we share with one another a sign of God's peace.
The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. I just want to say that again. Jesus is the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land, especially those that are at war and in conflict. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at last, with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 
blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus, our Savior, taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So we invite all those who are baptized and know and love the Lord Jesus to come and receive from his table this morning. We do have gluten-free wafers and non-alcoholic wine available, so please do indicate uh, if you uh, require those. Um, and if you prefer to come forward for a prayer of blessing, um, please do just keep your hands um, down by your sides and then I will know that uh, that's what you're looking for. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Just a reminder as well that uh, if you would like prayer for any reason at all during um, our, our time of sharing communion, uh, our prayer team are ready and waiting and available to pray with you in the side hall.
So we join together in praying the prayer after communion. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, some church family news. Now, I promised you that you would hear a little bit more about um, the food bank. So, Helen, will you come up and talk to us? Because you work in the food bank, don't you? Oh, you've got a bit of paper, well, even. Just there we go. <laughs> So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about what you do. Is it Tuesdays you go down yes. to the food? Um, I volunteer in food bank. Yeah. Um, I volunteer at Shirley Baptist um, Church uh, Food Bank. Um, there are five food banks, one each day across the city, and we are feeding a lot of people at the moment. The demand is very high. Right. So when I see that, it warms my heart <laughs> because they, um, we have a warehouse in Millbrook that I used to volunteer at, which was stuffed full of food, and it's now empty. I think life is tough for everyone, and I think the giving has been reduced hugely. So the food bank is now having to buy, spend a thousand pounds a week, so that organization, Southampton City Mission, is spending a thousand pounds a week on buying food to then bring to all the five food banks for us to then distribute that. Yeah, 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 that they buy from bookers. I don't actually know what bookers is, but I think they have a, it's a retail, um, yeah, I don't know. But I know that's where they spend the money. And uh, they are still very, very much wanting donations in your local supermarket. It can be any of us needing this. All people's circumstances are all different who come in. Some people's lives, as I always say to people, because people get very nervous coming in. They can't believe they've come to a food bank. And uh, I just say, you know, we're here for when life is tricky, and it could be me, could be you, could be any of us. Our, our circumstances in life can change overnight. So um, if we can all give a little bit, we won't have to keep spending the money to buy the food. Where yeah. you can put... Um, every time you go shopping, you can put a few bits in there. Yeah. And we are planning to reinstate. We used to have a, bo a big box here. We're planning to reinstate that as well here, so that you can uh, buy a few extra bits and leave them leave mm -hmm. them here every week. Um, Helen, without um, giving away any confidences, obviously not names or anything, but are you able to tell us even just perhaps a typical scenario or a scenario mm -hmm. of someone that you know perhaps has come in who who you've seen over the last few weeks without obviously giving any names? Of oh, course. Cool. Uh, so on, the, on Thursday I was on the desk so I'm receiving all the people coming in. Um, and people, it's, this is emergency food. They can only come to us. It used to be 12 times a year in, within a rolling year. It's now eight. They've had to reduce it because of the lack of food that being donated. Um, so let me think. Um, we used to feed maybe 50 people a day. I mean, on Thursday we fed um, 100, 115 people. We had a busy day. But as I say, people's circumstances are, were all very different. Uh, we had a group of mums come in, they were single mums with a few children each, and they were just, just generally struggling. Another gentleman came in, he'd lost his job a few weeks ago, and he was waiting for universal credit, and there's a gap. I think it's a five-week gap, and that's a big problem to people because they just don't have anything for five weeks. So we might see them five weeks in a row, and then we may never see them again. And interestingly, some people come back and donate back to us because we've helped them for that, that little bit of that tricky time in their life. Um, I 
Oh, just very grateful, very very grateful, very humble. Um, and I'll say it could be me, could be you, could be, could be any of us. Um, I had a, a couple came in the other day who he had had COVID and has long COVID, so his employer had got rid of him, so he no longer had um, income coming in. Um, and he, they very gingerly came in, and we gave him food. And they came a few times, and then they came back um, because they had he was back up on his feet again. Yeah. So all, all, all different circumstances. You know, because it's blessed them, they're coming back. When they're in a better position, they're coming back to give no donations themselves because they know what it means. Thank you so much, Helen, and we uh, applaud you and all that uh, the Food Bank and SCM do. Um, it's for the Food Bank. Yes, huge thank you. Um, Ruben, will you come up and... Uh, I don't think I've primed you for this, but uh, will you just come up as well? Because you have recently also started working for uh, the wonderful uh, SCM, um, and that, which is the same organisation that runs the Food Bank Southampton City Mission. Um, but you work in a different sort of branch of it, don't you? I just thought it'd be nice for us to hear from Ruben how he's getting on first few weeks in your new role. So, Ruben, how are you getting on? It's great. Um, Good. Yeah, it's lots of fun. I've been to the food bank a couple of times to help out. Um, we go to schools and do assemblies. We're in the middle of our harvest assembly season at the moment, so we're going into lots of different schools and doing that and collecting their donations. Yeah. Um, and you're going to St. Mark's? Yep, I saw you the other day in St. Mark's great. doing nice a to, collective nice worship. Yeah, nice to go back. And also you're going to be doing some stuff with, with Bannister over the road here as well, aren't you? Yeah. Which is it's great. So yes, <laughs> keep praying for Reuben. <laughs> so yes, keep praying for Reuben and all of the work that uh, SCM do. They're a marvellous organisation, so do keep them in your prayers and bear them in mind for donations. Um, so let me just see what else I need to say. Um, ah, now, um, Daniel, where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> um, Daniel ha is an artist. In fact, Daniel was, uh, Daniel's job is a, to be a tattoo artist, isn't it? Which is very exciting. I don't, think I, I don't think I've ever had a tattoo artist in any of my congregations before, so I'm very excited. Um, but um, Daniel wanted to use his gifts to, uh, to bless um, Isaac's gift, which is an amazing charity that Sophie and Andy run. Sophie, come to us a little bit, for those that don't know, Okay, so for those who Isaac's don't gift. know, um, we lost our son Isaac 10 years ago and we set up a charity in his memory. It raises money for Southampton Children's Hospital and Anthony Nolan, which is the bone marrow transplant donor register. Brilliant. So a wonderful organisation which, um, actually you were up for an award, weren't you, a week or so, a couple of weeks ago, um, and were highly commended for the Make a Difference Radio Solent Awards. So that was very exciting. Um, but um, Daniel wanted to use his gifts to bless Isaac's gift, and so he has made a beautiful, beautiful painting, which uh, he is going to, uh, well, between sort of Isaac's gift and... We'll organise it. We'll organise it. We're going to organise a raffle so that you can buy a ticket to win this amazing painting. Daniel, let us, let us see your painting. Tell us what was in your heart as you painted it as well. Show yeah. people what it is first, perhaps, and then... Um, tell us what was. So that's the painting. Let's hold it up nice and. Oh, I'll hold it up while you. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> it's dry. It's dry. Yeah. Um. So hold it up high and tell us what was in your heart, Daniel, as you painted this picture. So um, when I first heard about Andy's and Sophie's um, charity, I felt like I, I, um, I want to help them somehow. So um, I was thinking for a long time. Um, what should be the, the subject of the painting because there's like so much inspirational um, stories in the Bible and stuff but um, I think probably the, the closest to my heart is um, Matthew 14 22 33 which is basically um, when Peter when they get in trouble on the sea and um, Peter steps out from the boat because it has a really strong message which is keep your eyes on Christ as um, until you do it um, everything's going to be all right you won't drown and um, it's just a really good daily reminder that um, that should be probably 
one on the, on the daily list. Um, actually, uh, it's been in progress since a long, quite a long time, and um, I seen this painting a day on a daily. I've been working on it, and it it was just a good feeling to remind me every time that that just keep your eyes on Christ, and um, and everything's gonna be alright. So um, yeah, basically that's all. Um, I'm happy to give this to you guys, and um, I hope we can achieve as much as we can yeah. for your charity. It is just the most beautiful painting. I just, I just want to say that this, this picture, to me, it really speaks a lot because at Isaac's funeral, one of the songs that we had was Oceans, right. and you called out Across the Water. Um, and it, to me, that is a verse which speaks to me as well. And obviously, we didn't collude on this at all. No. Like, God's really in it. Yeah. So thank you. It's just amazing, isn't it? That is um, so wonderful. And it's on my heart so to take some prints of it so that people want to get prints as well. Yes. And I think that would be a good yes. thing. So people have the ability to have it in their house. It's yeah. Yeah. It is really stunning. So I'm going to put it... Uh, where can I put it? We'll put it somewhere up here where people can come and look. Don't touch it, though. But just... Um, no, it's, it's, just um, it's, it's varnished. It's ready to frame and hang in anybody's living room or office or anywhere. So, okay. Yeah, it's touched right. Okay, yeah. it is absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much yeah. for that, uh, Daniel. I can see how it would have been a, a sort of a devotional experience, really, painting, painting that. And um, I'm certain that the person who ends up with it on, the, on their wall will be able with themselves to use it um, as a devotional image to remind themselves of, um, of who Jesus is in the storm to them. So that's wonderful. And a final piece of uh, exciting family news. Dave, can I, can I call you up? Let's give Dave a little ripple as he, as he comes up. So, Dave, you hold that for a minute. So, <laughs> yes, that's for you. <laughs> so, Dave, you, how long have you been with us? Uh, three months. Three months. You're a, you've yeah. been at Francis' house? Yeah. yeah. And so, what's happening for you this week? Uh, I'm going, leaving treatment, and then going, I've got to go to London, then back up north to where I live, so back where, into the real world. Yeah, where are you from? Hull. 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 Oh. Did I say it right? It's a silent hedge. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, it's been such a privilege and pleasure and joy to have you um, with us for these weeks while you've been uh, at Francis' house. Tell us how you first started coming to St Mark's. Um, well, I came just to get out of the house, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, no, I came just to get out of the house and then, I don't know, just, there was a lot of people that welcomed me here. Um, a couple of people said things on my first day and it just made me go, actually, it's just lovely being here. Come ever since. I've had cry in the corner. Didn't think I'd cry in church, so I'll be at church. Um, <laughs> so it's been lovely, so thank you all, really. You've all made me feel really welcome. It's been really nice. Well, it's, a, it's been a great pleasure to share this time and this experience with you. And and how, how have you found um, a sort of, how, were you, have you been a, a known Jesus in your life? Is this a new thing for um, you to be part of a, a church and, and, and a journey of faith? Well, I think I went to Sunday school for years when I was younger. School things and churches and things like that. Yeah. In school. But yeah. You remember it being big old well, like big old churches and not very appealing. Right. <laughs> right. But my, my mind's been changed completely by this place. So. Oh, that's wonderful to hear, isn't it, folks? That's really lovely to hear. So, uh, we'd love to pray for you as you um, leave your, um, you know, leave the sort of the little cocoon of, of the uh, of the of Francis House and go back out into the real world. We are so proud of you and proud of all of our guys who come through uh, Francis House. We really are. And um, we, we want to send you out with our blessing. So um, where's Paul? Paul, will you come and uh, help me pray for Dave? Here. Oh, Lord, let's pray for Dave. Lord, we just, we just thank you for this man, Lord. We thank you. For your work in his life we thank you for his journey 
and we thank you that his journey has taken him here. Lord, now we pray for the next season in his journey, Lord, and we pray your blessings on them. We pray you'll shine your light to his feet, guide his path, bless him every day, in every way. Lord, give him wisdom in all the decisions that he makes. And Father, we pray you appoint your angels to look after him. Have your angels to the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, above and below. Bless him. Bless his family. And may he grow in his long knowledge and love of you. Lord, we thank you for Dave. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Do come back and visit. So we're going to have our final uh, song now in which we sing of the amazing grace of Jesus. I invite you to stand if you're comfortable to do so. What well, exciting uh, sort of things to try and follow. Um, and uh, there's just so many things we can be thankful for God for. Um, yeah, look at the painting, uh, look at um, all that wonderful provision, and we're going to sing of God's amazing grace. The grace of power, of sin and darkness, His love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory.
do stay for refreshments uh, after the service. We'd love to uh, chat with you, particularly if you're new here. We'd love to get to know you a little bit. Um, and prayer is still available in the side hall um, if you would like prayer for any reason at all. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you place us at the centre. Feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, Look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives in service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives may bring glory to you. Amen. May this season of mellow fruitfulness enrich and bless you. May you harvest relationships of trust, forgiveness and generosity. And until we meet again, may you be kept in the hollow of God's hand.